Today I'm going to be showing you how to make an ombre style collage using prints that I made with my Jelly Arts gel printing plate. If you're like me, you probably have a big stack by now and you're not quite sure what to do with them. I um, started playing with them in collage and came up with a pattern that I really liked and I wanted to show that with show that to you today. Here is an example of what I'll be showing you how to make. As you can see it kind of fades from one color to the next and has about four or five different bands of color. To make this you're going to need an assortment of prints and I'm using only the ones that I've created recently with my gel printing plate. And here's just an example of some of the ones I've made recently. As you can see, each one is very different. They're all different colors, different patterns. A little chaotic, which I happen to like. But I have found that if you put it in some sort of collage, it does have kind of a, a smooth flow to it and it takes away from the chaos a little bit. So let me move these out of the way. So what you'll need is I have just a, um, a about a 16 by 20 canvas board. Um, you can also use something in your art journal or um, you could put this on a regular canvas, cardstock, whatever you have handy just to play with it and get the the technique down. Today I'm going to be using golden regular gel matte medium. Um, this is an old cruddy little container I've had for quite a while. Just a tip, I tend to buy the large um, container of it and then put it in a small more usable container so that's why it's so cruddy. Then um, from there I actually put it in a little plastic dish and I have a one old cruddy um, paintbrush that I use just for using my gels and Mod Podge, um, all that because it will destroy your brush. So pick one and use it for that. And for today's technique I'm using about um, three to one, three parts gel medium to one part water and we'll talk about that more in a minute. And then I would also suggest a um, small pair of scissors, a straight edge ruler, I have this funky um, ruler that has, um, or an edge rather, that gives you a torn edge effect. And then I've also found that using these little um, samples from the hardware store, um, they are also great for using um, to cut paper quickly. Um, sometimes you don't want a big old ruler, um, and then I have that in a couple sizes. I also use them for um, paint. Okay, let me get all those out of the way. So the trickiest part of this whole project is to figure out how to um, come up with the, the color story that you're going to use for your, for your project. And this one, as you can see, there's about four or five different bands of color. One is a very dark band. Then it kind of moves up into a turquoise or a teal. Then it kind of moves up into um, some greens and some yellows. And then it moves into some greens and reds. And finally it ends with greens, reds, and oranges. And when you pull back from it, it actually reads as orange into green, into teal, into a very dark green. Okay, so how I do this, you're going to have... Um, a lot of pages that have just kind of random splotches of color. Well, they're, they're going to read very differently depending on what you're looking at. So for example, this area right here would read as blue. This area here would read more as yellow. And so depending on how you cut it, whether you cut it, if you cut it here, this piece here would read as blue. If you cut it here, this piece would read as yellow. So what I tend to do is just kind of cut the pages up and I'll pick four or five um, that are pages that I like and what you'll end up with are some little stacks of paper and I pulled some of the ones that were left over from the project that I did just to give you a sense and as you can see when you pull back this one's obviously a very light turquoise this is a darker turquoise this is a blue green this one is more of a green yellow and then this one reads as a very dark green and then in terms of how you lay it out 
I usually start with the bottom and work my way up. And so I would start with the darker colors first. And when you're working on an edge, you're going to want to pick a larger piece and pull it out so that it's going to be easy to wrap later. So you can see I'm overlapping by a good uh, inch or so on both the top and on the side. And so I would just kind of pre-lay it out. And as you can see, I'm not using the exact same pages. I had multiple pages that had um, that kind of dark green color. And it's good to mix it up so that you have kind of a, a look to it. Now once you've got about your first um, couple of inches, your first band of color, the next thing you're going to do is start to blend in to the next um, band of color. So what you'll see, if we go back to the page, you'll see that I've already started to layer in some turquoise even though this piece here is still mostly darks. What that does is give you the kind of that ombre effect when you stand back and look at it, it will read like it's starting to blend. If you're one of those that wants to see most of the uh, patterns, then you'll want to keep your squares rather large. If you are wanting it to be very blended, then you'll want your squares or rectangles to be much smaller. I have found for a 16 by 20 size canvas that I um, am pretty happy with um, squares and rectangles that are about an inch to up to maybe three or four inches, about that size is what I what I find myself most happy with. So what that looks like um, as you're pulling it together, as you can see, I've got this band here, I've got this one piece that's sticking up rather high here. What I might do is I would start to overlap it like this so that as I build it, I'm starting to introduce that new color um, before I get to its band. Eventually what you would want to do is make sure that all of your um, colors would be um, kind of a stripe. And you would see also that this, the darker color is starting to bleed um, or continues to bleed into this next, um, this next row and that will give you that effect that, that at least what I've been going for. So um, I mentioned a moment ago that I would talk a little bit more about the gel medium. I have found for these kinds of uh, collage projects that a little bit heavier cardstock tends to not bubble. Um, it stays really crisp. I've also found um, that I've had great success with golden paints or um, a little bit higher quality paints. Um, you can certainly use the cheaper acrylics, but they don't have the pop or the plasticky brightness that you get from cold, from golden. Um, this is kind of the brightness and vibrancy that you get from golden paints. If you move up into these, these are, I believe, more the the cheaper acrylics. And while it still gives great color, there's a great difference in terms of how much the color pops. Um, also, these are mostly... Um, uh, cardstock while some of these are paper and I have found that um, the paper tends to bubble a little bit so if you're using cardstock for me I found if I use the golden um, gel medium straight out of the carton it takes a lot of work if I add a little bit of water and make it a little bit um, creamier um, it tends to soak into the cardstock a little better and makes the cardstock pliable, especially when you're trying to wrap the edges. And um, so in terms of how I lay this thing out, at the very end, I will I'll leave the edge all the way around. And then at the very end, after it's really good and dry on the top, then I'll flip it over and bend the edges back and seal it on the back side. So that is my uh, tutorial on how to create a ombre effect collage. I hope you'll give it a try and thanks for watching.